welcome. Wise up on your hands on. Little fire side ambience right now. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Damien, and I'm going to give you a walkthrough of new features from Wise Audio Lab. 2021.1.4 release uh, just came out last week. Good to see folks in the chat. Cheers. Uh, yeah. Excited to be taking steps with folks out there today into the Wise Audio Lab, one of the sample projects available for working with Wise in Unreal. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about how to get started with it. Uh, a couple of little things here and there as we find our way into the projects. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in today. Hey, good to see y'all. Uh, it's going to be fun. So I hope everyone's having a great fall. Uh, colors are starting to change here in Seattle. A little sunshine. I hope it's sunny and the world is shining on you where you're at. But let's go. Let's talk about the Wise Audio Lab. A little peek of what's been running here in real time. Just uh, camped out by the fireside. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we wade into it. Um, connected over here on the wise side of the screen. Unreal on the left, wise on the right. Uh, and you can see some of the dynamic audio object functionality that we'll be talking through today. So cool. Holler in the chat if you have questions as we go through. I'll try to keep folks posted on what we're talking about. Uh, and while we're still in this mellow mood, just want to give a big shout out to team at Audio Kinetic, uh, everyone who coordinated, pulled together to make this release of the Wise Audio Lab special, these new features. Uh, this is definitely a, a part of creating Wise here is bringing these samples that leverage new functionality that, uh, that we continue to evolve as part of Wise. So it's great to be able to bring those features from WISE into our integrations across Unreal and Unity and as part of the SDK that's available for integration in any game engine. And uh, yeah, a ton of effort from folks to make this version of the WISE Audio Lab special. Uh, serve as an example for folks uh, to get their hands and their ears on it. and. Yeah, I hope everyone takes some time to explore what the Wise Audio Lab has to offer, which is what we'll be doing today. So I'm going to clean up a little bit here. I'm going to stop this. It's going to be a hard stop. Ooh, pulls you right out of the mood. But we are going to carry that mood forward and talk more about the Wise Audio Lab. So... First thing I want to do, I want to give you this spooky blue screenshot and talk you through some of the high level features that we're going to talk about today in the Wise Audio Lab. So, first up is going to be a little bit of introduction to the launcher, how you can get your hands on the Wise Audio Lab yourself. Uh, documentation, it's out there. Everything that you need to get started uh, is provided both uh, online uh, through the Audio Kinetic website and also uh, in the game. And we'll talk more about that. 
Then we're going to cover two big pieces of the new features. Uh, first, the object-based audio changes, uh, changes we've put in to enable the flow of objects to an endpoint, leveraging the new object-based pipeline in WISE, as well as some of the cool spatial audio features that really bring um, dynamic workflows and extending on workflows that have been part of the WISE uh, since its inception in 2017. So uh, excited to put those in front of folks. Uh, if you've been following along at home for the last uh, year, you know that we've done some presentations using the WISE Audio Lab and the spatial audio functionality at this year's WISE Worldwide Online Expo. Still out there on our YouTube channel, so definitely take a trip back in time to some of those videos to get uh, even deeper dive on some of the functionality that we'll talk about here today. But uh, there's a lot of resources out there, and um, I'm looking forward to stepping you through some of that. So let's talk Wise Launcher. Uh, available online through audiokinetic.com. Grab it, get it installed. Uh, the first thing you'll see are a bunch of resources for you to get your eyes and ears on right out of the gate. Uh, you can see that there's been a blog post recently uh, overviewing all of the features that we're going to talk to you today. So whether you're viewing this in real time, uh, I see you there in the chat, uh, or whether you're coming at this after the fact, we have a handy reference for all the things we're going to cover today in the live stream uh, on the Audio Kinetic blog. And what we're talking about today are our samples uh, available through the samples tab on the top. Uh, and if I navigate to the WISE Audio Lab, you can see that I have a few different versions of it installed. And uh, additionally, I can install the latest version of it here at the bottom. So I've already done that, spoilers. Uh, I think you would expect no less. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is the default Unreal project that you can download as part of that sample. Uh, it's a fully imp implemented project uh, coupled with the latest full release of WISE. That's 2021.1.4 for this live stream. And on the right, I've got the WISE authoring application set to the audio object profiler layout. So I'll get that just flopped back into the default layout. And there's a lot going on here in WISE. So if this is your first time, like bathe in all of this information. Uh, there's a ton of it here. And one of the things we're going to talk about today from a implementation changes to the WISE Audio Lab is going to be object-based audio. And I want to talk through a bunch of different things that we've done here, starting with uh, some of the system audio device changes that we've made. Uh, but first, I'm going to do a little housekeeping before I jump into that. So let's go back to our default implementation and talk about a couple of things that I've done uh, to make our experience uh, more exciting today. So the first thing is that when we're dealing with audio objects, if you've done any um, reading about it or have listened to any of our previous uh, hands-on with audio objects and the audio object functionality of WISE 21.1, uh, you know that there is a negotiation of system audio objects at the audio device. And so when I was queued up that campfire uh, for you, I in my Windows sound settings, I flipped it over to the Windows Sonic for Headphones uh, spatial sound plugin. 
which allowed windows to receive audio objects that were communicated by WISE. And I'm going to turn those off now. So we'll get back to those, but an important thing to keep in context is that audio objects in the context of a platform um, you know, require the enabling or disabling the, of those on the platform. The same is true for any folks out there who've been uh, messing around with uh, 3D audio on their platforms. It's a, it's a enable, disable, and, and that's where you do it in Windows. So the other thing I want to call out is that in front of you, you see Unreal, you see Wise. Uh, these are two applications, and, and they each have the ability to reserve those system audio objects. And so they can actually uh, say to the platform, uh, hey, I'd like to reserve those system audio objects and use those. So for today's demo, because I'm using Unreal in conjunction with WISE, I've got both those applications open, I've gone ahead in the audio settings in the authoring audio preferences menu in WISE, and I've disabled system audio objects. So I, I'm not uh, using audio objects uh, in WISE. I'll be using all of them as part of uh, what Unreal will reserve so that I can profile how Unreal is handling those and profile how Windows is uh, managing those as well. So there we go, disabled. Uh, and now you know that these applications have the ability to reserve these system audio objects, making it um, yeah, a question of who's got those. So make sure that you know who has those uh, by ensuring that in this case, WISE is not using them. So cool. Um, I like it. The, so we'll dig into then the new uh, system audio device this is a cross-platform audio device uh, in WISE, newly updated as part of 21.1. And it comes with a whole bunch of new functionality that's never existed for, uh, for the audio device before. Uh, we have settings like the ability to allow 3D audio or not. Uh, we have a main mix configuration for uh, our binaural and home speaker or home theater configuration for the main mix in WISE, uh, allowing system audio objects or not, um, a minimum system audio objects available, and then a new uh, effects um, on the audio device where we have our mastering suite installed. And for folks who haven't checked that out, uh, we have this beautiful new mastering suite uh, that allows you to, you know, fine tune the the last um, last aspect of your mix, and uh, it's, it's got colors. Uh, so we won't dig too deep into that. We'll save that for another time. Uh, additionally, you'll see that we have three different categories of metering on this audio device editor. Uh, we have our main mix, we have a pass-through mix, and we have objects. And you'll start to see those dance as we move further through this demonstration. Uh, and again, we've done some presentations in the past on these categories and the use of audio objects uh, towards authoring for the best output across uh, all the different ways that people listen to sound. Uh, so we'll talk around that a bit, but if you really want to go deep on these and object-based audio, I suggest you dig a little bit deeper into our video and uh, documentation blogs about audio objects, and uh, there's a lot out there. So 
I'm hoping that people are slowly digesting this. And one of the things that the, the Wise Audio Lab really brings is an ability for you to audition some of these concepts that we've been talking about, some of these features that have been available in the WISE authoring application, but maybe a, a little bit out of reach contextually. So the WISE Audio Lab really brings to you the ability to audition these different things, and that's what our hands-on is gonna be about today. So we'll also look at this device info as we move through, which will bring back information from the endpoint, and in this case, from our Windows environment. Uh, it will bring information back about uh, what is happening. Uh, and you can see in the beginning, I turned off the spatial sound, and we have the uh, no 3D audio active and a main mix configuration of 2.0. So, exciting. Uh, the parallel to this is that over in Unreal, in the WISE Audio Lab, we've also added menu options to be able to control these aspects of the system audio device. And this is a trend that you'll see uh, as we move through We've created uh, this ability inside of the Unreal application so that you don't have to run WISE to be able to toggle these things and hear them changing in real time. So that's the system audio device. Uh, yeah, dig it. So next up, I want to talk about the way that we have changed the routing in the master audio bus uh, in the WISE Audio Lab WISE project. Uh, and these changes have been done to allow for the flow of sounds through WISE uh, to be put into these different categories. and talk through the, the reasoning behind that. So here in our master audio bus, and what do you think? Is that visible from you, uh, from, from where you are on your screen? Um, I think it might be a way for me to go a little bit closer. Uh, so the master audio bus now has four different buses that uh, are routed to it. Uh, we have a bus for our backgrounds, uh, which are routed to the same as main mix configuration. We have a environmental aux bus that uh, has all of our early reflections and late verb routed to it, uh, and those each have their own configuration set on it. We also have the positional audio objects that is inheriting the same as parent bus configuration. So it's going to inherit whatever the master audio bus configuration is. And in this case, that is always going to be defined by the device. So whatever the device says, the master audio bus will uh, configure for. And um, as such, if audio objects are available at the endpoint, uh, they will be allowed to flow through and arrive there for any processing from those spatializations. The last top level category in the master mixer hierarchy is our UI pass-through mix. And you'll see this as I go through uh, reflected in the meters. The pass-through mix is a mix that is untouched by any spatial processing when it's enabled at the endpoint. So this is for uh, keeping the full frequency and fidelity of sounds without doing any fancy processing on it by the endpoint. 
Okay. Did that work? Uh, that magnifying thing? Uh, if it did, I'm so chuffed. Uh, I, I see in the uh, chat that it may have, so yeah, awesome. Cool. Well, uh, uh, working, working good. Dig. So, so that was uh, a bit about how we've rerouted the hierarchy in the master mixer. And we tried to make those descriptions of buses pretty self-explanatory. So when we say backgrounds, we're talking about the ambient backgrounds and those things uh, will inherit the, the channel configuration that is defined as the main mix. So whatever your endpoint defines as your main mix channel configuration. And we'll look at some of the different ways that that is defined by uh, Windows in this case. Um, the backgrounds will adapt to that uh, channel configuration. Uh, similarly, as I talked about with positional audio objects, we're just going to carry those to the master audio bus and let the master audio bus um, you know, get that information and and pass it to the audio device to categorize the sounds in a way that fits the output configuration. Uh, lastly, that UI pass-through mix, that is a 2.0 configuration, so uh, stereo left and right, and it is unfiltered by any processing that might be enabled. Cool. So questions coming in uh, into the chat. I'm going to grab them as they come. So please just, uh, yeah, if you have questions, let's dig into it. Uh, if there are more wise emitters than available system objects, do the remainder get culled? Are they put through normal panning pipeline? Uh, there's already an answer here. Any audio objects over the system limit get mixed to either the main mix or pass-through mix, depending on their properties. Love the way the chat is working today. Y'all are asking and answering each other's questions. So thanks for the good question. And uh, and yeah, so exactly, when you reach that limit, uh, those audio objects that uh, don't have system audio objects available are going to get mixed either into the main mix or the pass-through mix, depending on the properties that you set. So, so there, is, uh, there is that automation from the endpoint spatialization perspective, but we don't have any control over the prioritization of those audio object to uh, mix uh, transitions. And so, you, a lot of times you want to be conservative about how you choose to preserve audio objects to the endpoint so that you always make sure that what you want there is preserved and you don't end up with any transitioning artifacts uh, when you reach your audio object or system audio object limits. We haven't fun yet. <laughs> this is... Uh, great. So thank you for that question. Um, we're going to jump in next to an example that we have set up as part of this new routing structure. And it is the campfire. This is going to be one of two examples that we'll run through here quick and start to really look at what it means to have these different categories of sound. Uh, so... Back here to our example, I'm going to go to the Wise Audio Lab. I've still got my menu open, and I guess at this point, why don't I get Wise connected? So I'm going to pop open my remote connections. I'm going to connect to the Wise Audio Lab editor that's running here on my local host. And we're going to start to see some of the information uh, that is presented when you're profiling. So now I've connected Wise to Unreal. Uh, these, these two are talking to each other or listening, uh, as it were. 
And if I pop open this system audio device, we can see that at this point, everything is routed to the main mix. Our spatial sound is off. Uh, we have our left and right channels and the amplitude of those things. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch spatial sound on to show you how that changes. So now with spatial sound on, my main mix has been uh, has been set as a 714 mix. This is the the mix that Windows initializes, uh, or this is the channel configuration that Windows initializes uh, for the main mix. Uh, and you can also see that the pass through has become active and audio objects have become active. Now we'll come back to a little bit more of that and how that is metered and what that uh, looks like here in a second. Uh, but lastly, I just wanted to look through some of this device info. Is 3D audio active? Yes, it is. I switched it on. Pass through is active. I have some available system audio objects. Um, we again see the number that uh, are available, the number that I'm using, uh, the main mix channel configuration as it's noted up here on the meter as well. And lastly, the pass-through channel configuration and configuration of the endpoint. Uh, we also have this main mix configuration uh, for binauralization, and we can make some changes to this to override the default or the game-defined settings. So we could switch that to an ambisonics output as well uh, to, to force that as our channel configuration for the main mix. Put it back to game defined and hop back over here to the wall. I still have the menu open here, which you access using the space bar in, an, in the uh, Unreal Editor. And if I move across different options in the, uh, in the menu, you can see that my pass-through mix is getting uh, it's getting amplitude. Uh, so the sounds in the UI are all routed to the same as pass-through mix configuration. And these will be untouched by the spatialization that we've enabled at the Windows endpoint. So that's kind of cool. And we're just going to use the teleport functionality here in the menu to jump to the campfire example that I was talking about. So here we are, get out of the menu. And I think this is, we're kind of back to where we started, uh, gathered around the campfire, uh, enjoying our time with each other, and hopefully learning a thing or two about interactive audio today. So this campfire, as I mentioned, has been uh, re-implemented in the latest version of the WISE Audio Lab 2021.1.4. And let's look at how that is set up for. We're going to go to our actor mixer hierarchy and our ambient elements to the campfire. And we see that we have a actor mixer here with three different assets in it. We have the campfire crackling. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. We have the campfire crackling. We have the campfire combustion. And we have the campfire rum rumble. And these are three individual elements of the campfire uh, that I'm going to talk through. Uh, and the first one is the campfire rumble, and I guess I could solo this, although it might be worth cranking this a little bit. Okay, so the campfire rumble. Hopefully you're hearing it. It's a very low frequency kind of sound. And instead of trying to spatialize that, we've chosen to preserve that as part of the pass-through mix. 
And the way that we've done that is we've added some metadata to it for the WISE system output settings with a mix behavior of mixing to the pass-through mix. So that will deliver this sound when spatialization is enabled without any of that binaural processing with any spatial or uh, virtualized uh, HRTF business. Uh, it's just going to pass through the rumble of this campfire. So that's that's one layer of this campfire. The next layer of the campfire is the combustion layer. Let's take that off. And the combustion layer we've chosen to route to the main mix, or we've assigned a, a wise system output setting metadata for a mix behavior of mix to main. And so this will uh, this will inherit the configuration of the main mix. And when spatialization is enabled, it will be spatialized using the properties of the channel configuration set by either the endpoint or in the system audio device settings. So that's cool because this layer's got a little bit more mid-frequency content in it. We want to hear that. We want to understand spatially where that's located with that higher level of precision that comes from uh, a binaural processing uh, at the endpoint. And it's cool. Uh, if you haven't got your ears on this kind of technology yet, it brings a little bit more precision to the panning. And again, worth experimenting with in the Wise Audio Lab or your own project. Now the last piece here is the campfire crackling. And we're just uh, preserving this all the way to our ambience bus, which is set with a uh, same as parent configuration. And so when audio objects are available at the endpoint, uh, and these will pass through that's the wrong word. These will be delivered to the endpoint as individual audio objects when those audio objects are available. And just a, a little peek behind the curtain on how we set that up is that there's a bunch of random variations for campfire crackling sounds. These are those tiny little clicks and pops. Uh, person could solo those as well. So those kind of come in and out. And what's been done is that they, uh, uh, there is some automation happening uh, on some of these where they will randomly position themselves uh, along different ranges of positioning. Okay, kind of abstract, right? Uh, but let's take a look at what that campfire actually looks like over in the audio object profile. So, as I mentioned, uh, we have these three layers of sound for the campfire. And we can filter through these to be able to see their location as well as their spread information in the audio object 3D viewer. So here is that rumble sound and its position from the listener. got the combustion layer down here and lastly we've got the crackling and those are those randomly positioned little snaps and pops that are getting uh, yeah thrown out there in front of things so I'm using here the filter toolbar up in the audio object list 
to kind of clear the noise and be able to focus in on those different elements of the fire. Uh, I've also got the voice monitor open down here at the bottom and can move back in time to see, oh, that one sound was really a little bit out of, uh, yeah, didn't fit with the rest. Great, let me find it. Okay, that was the one and I can take care of it in my prompt. So this ability to profile in real time really brings into focus what you're working with and, and gives you that opportunity to make those creative choices. So, checking in on the chat here, it looks like there's some great conversation happening. Uh, folks talking about things. Uh, awesome. Great to see it. And it looks like, for the most part, folks are taking care. So, cool. uh, let me know if there's any questions about the campfire. Um, otherwise, we're going to move on to the next example, which is the fountain. So, the fountain has also been set up similarly with these different layers. Uh, we won't go quite as far into detail with those, but let's jump over. Using that space bar, uh, we got the same teleport system. Uh, we're going to go to that fountain. So we've got this uh, delicious fountain here. Uh, fantastic example to use. And maybe you're already seeing in the audio object profiler a bit of what we've done here uh, with regards to the way that audio objects have been authored. So each of those fountain splashes has a uh, a splash loop attached to it that travels around with the fountain as it's moving and uh, and then in the fountain center we have a couple of different sounds playing that we've uh, defined through metadata to be to inherit the main mix configuration so Again, a multi-layered approach to an ambient sound, leveraging the best of what these sound categories offer uh, and, and really enriching the sound at a level of detail that it's just fun, it's just great. It sounds fantastic. Um, and it's been a lot of fun to Tune these over time. Again, we're talking about uh, real time. Interactive audio. Cool. Right? Uh, okay, so that's fun. Uh, these are the two examples that you can get your hands on. And the other part about these examples that is awesome uh, is here in the sound options menu. We have available the bus configurations for our four different buses. So from within the Unreal uh, Wise Audio Lab menu, you can grab a bus and change its configuration from within Unreal. So if you want to hear what does it sound like when I change the bus configuration for the, for the audio objects uh, and set them to a 2.0, you can hear how that changes. Maybe even you can hear how that changes on the stream. Uh, but putting your hands on this, being able to set these configurations and audition for yourself, what these changes bring, the, the level of detail that results from making these changes, how it arrives at the endpoint when spatialization is enabled, or let's just disable it on the fly. Again, meant as a tool 
to help you audition and understand the sound that you're creating for your game and really give you the tools to make the creative choices for how these should sound the best for the experience that you're building. So uh, these configurations are invaluable in that audition process. And again, many of these things are accessible from in, within the WISE project uh, when you're connected to the WISE Audio Lab as well. We could do a similar operation on the in the master mixer by going to our positional audio objects bus and changing the configuration from same as parent to 2.0 to 7.1 to 7.14 and each time we can see that the metering for it changes to reflect it. Speaking of metering changing to reflect it, uh, let's talk a little bit about the newly added uh, debug visibility for metering in the newest Unreal Wise Audio Lab. Uh, back to our handy menu, uh, we have our sound options debug log if we turn that on we now get a representation of the audio device metering categories reflected inside of the unreal editor and unreal version of the wise audio lab so if you're looking for an example of bringing that kind of functionality to the game you're working on. Uh, the WISE Audio Lab provides an example of how you get this metering information from WISE and present it through the heads-up display inside of your game in Unreal. So not just a way to audition, but also a way to understand some of the techniques that can empower your workflows in whatever game that you're working on. So a great feature addition to the WISE Audio Lab for 2021.1.4, uh, bringing that metering information from the audio device directly into the heads-up display. Right? Because that's what it looks like. Sorry. <laughs> that is what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. I don't know how many folks have worked on projects that uh, present this kind of information as part of the debug functionality of the game, but uh, it sure is nice to have when you don't have a connection to WISE going. Maybe you're playing in the conference room uh, with QA, maybe you're uh, auditioning it with uh, your producer to uh, show them some cool new thing that you implemented, uh, but bringing that kind of visibility to be able to understand things through the screen, through your game, uh, through your experience, uh, it's a valuable thing to have. So uh, again, in the menu, sound options, debug log, it can be toggled on and off. So great new feature and functionality. Cool. Um, the last thing that I want to show off related to audio objects is the radio, uh, which we have added the ability to choose the uh, layered campfire as an option. So let's take a look at that. Uh, for that, I'm actually going to jump out of the village and return to the main menu. The other part of the WISE Audio Lab that we have at our disposal is part of the uh, complete Unreal Project sample that you can install through the launcher is what we call the Echo Room. So you, the future grandfather and listening today, this presents uh, the ability to... Of your grandkids. 
spawn the radio anywhere uh, in the room and set some paths for it to travel so that you can uh, hear the effects inside of this uh, room that has different controllable features. Uh, I'm going to move it from dialogue to that campfire we were talking about. And from here we can set the different room material types. So everything from concrete, drywall, wood, and anechoic uh, to setting the room size. And we can scale the size of this room dynamically and hear how things reflect off the surfaces using the Wise Reflect plugin. And as I mentioned before, we also have that visibility to understand uh, audio objects as they are moving through so you and what it sounds like. Your grandfather listening to you can dynamically move around here. Uh, it's a great way to audition sounds, hear different material properties, and another great resource here in the WISE Audio Lab. So definitely check that out. Um, one of my fave things to do is to head over here to the game object uh, 3D viewer and get a visual representation of what's happening here. Again, fully detailed information about what's happening in the echo room in the documentation. Definitely dig in deeper there to unpack all of the cool features of the Echo Room. But it's really fun to be able to see these things in the Game Object 3D Viewer. If you're savvy, you can pop open the 3D Viewer settings. Uh, it's really fun to click on the rays uh, and see how uh, sound is being measured within the geometry. Um, it's pretty fun. I like that. And uh, what's the other? There's another cool one that I like. Um, well, and yeah, again, kind of back to these sound options. Uh, let's Let's see what happens when we change the reflection order for these early reflections from first to second to third to fourth. And yeah, it kind of goes crazy, right? Um, again, like this is the number of bounces that a sound makes using the Wise Reflect plugin. So fully auditionable in real time. Um, fun to see the ref the effects of your choices uh, both visually and and how they sound so a worthwhile side of auditioning and using the wise audio lab to help you understand these different techniques these different game audio phenomenon so Hope you can get your hands and ears on it. I'm going to jump back into the village again. Oh yeah, and we've got the uh, the visualization here uh, of of the entire world. You can see some of the uh, seagulls flying overhead here as they rotate. Uh, again, just a, a wealth of information. Maybe that's a little noisy for you and you only want to see the seagulls. So again, back to our profiler filter toolbar. Uh, we can kind of thin the noise out a little bit uh, and focus in on just what we want to see at any given time. We also get that geometry there. And that leads me to the next section. We're going to talk about spatial audio features of the WISE Audio Lab. 
Again, a ton of work done by the Spatial Audio team to carry forward some of the cool things that arrived as part of WISE 21.1 and have now landed as a best practice example uh, in the WISE Audio Lab for 21.1.4. So let's talk through some of those features. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is multi-position radial emitters. So what we did is we completely modified the ocean ambient sound blueprint uh, to leverage this feature. Um, new, new town ambience as well uh, and new attenuations for these things. So let's take a look at, well, I think we could see the scope of it here uh, in WISE. Uh, We've got this top-down view. Uh, we've got a lot of emitters here. And we can see the, the way that that's being handled uh, maximizes the resources by only creating a, a single instance of that sound for all of these emitters uh, that manages the positioning of it uh, across all of them in a in an optimized way and in a way that sounds great. Uh, I'm going to step out of Unreal for a second so that we can see what that looks like. And back here in the project itself, uh, click on this ambient sound. And you can see that in the level itself, we've got the emitter in the, in the center. Uh, we have the spline of uh, emitters circling the island of Wise Audio Lab. And at wherever you are on the island, then that you will get that positioning information from the emitter uh, or emitters that you're closest to uh, reflected in uh, the sound of the ocean around you. So, a uh, great example of that technique. If you have games, you got those torches that are in the hallway, uh, you know, other scenarios where you have the same sound coming from, uh, yeah, other scenarios where you have the same sound coming from many different locations. Uh, this is a technique that can be leveraged to help solve phasing issues that you might have from spawning the same sound on multiple emitters. Uh, and it's just a great technique for managing that resource. So uh, I, I will again focus the outliner here in Unreal on the ocean ambient sound. Uh, and here we have the top-down view of the WISE Audio Lab. Uh, showing the uh, spline drawn around the island with the different emitters. And you can dig into the, the blueprint for this, um, dig into the way that this has been implemented to help understand the technique and maybe even use it as part of your game world. So big shout out to Tali Kaklikian on the R&D team for her work on this. Uh, it's a fantastic example of how to do this kind of technique. So hope y'all can dig into that. Uh, there's Dolly. Thanks. Thanks. And thanks for the team behind the scenes for letting me know when that slide stays up longer than I would like it to. Uh, very helpful. Thanks. Uh, cool. Uh, speaking of slides, the other thing that we've done is we've added room tones, which are a event that can be added to a AK spatial audio volume uh, throughout the WISE Audio Lab. Uh, we've removed all those uh, trigger volumes where, you know, on enter, play event, on exit, stop event, uh, a traditional way that you can implement ambience um, throughout a level. And we've replaced it with the ability to author a WISE event on an AK Spatial Audio volume 
that uh, that is dynamically managed using the the volume and attenuations, including spatial audio integration with rooms and portals, to be able to dynamically modulate that room tone and ambient sound uh, so that it works the way you would expect it to with uh, with geometry and with uh, portals throughout the world. So I think we can take a quick peek at one of those here in the town. Uh, what is a spatial? on down to that. And where is that? Maybe it's better here. I'm using the F key in Unreal. All you Unreal folks out there probably know that one, but when you select something in the World Outliner and press F, it will focus you to it. Uh, so uh, here we have uh, nothing there. Uh, yeah, here's one. So in the house, we have added this AK event, uh, which automatically posts, and we will play that as part of the, the ambience when you are inside of this spatial audio volume. And co when connected to a portal, we also allow that to propagate outside of uh, you know, allowing for the behavior of that portal. So uh, propagating outside of a window or door in this case. And uh, another great example of, you know, taking some of the pain away of implementation for common things like blanketing your world with an ambient. Uh, this, this addition in conjunction with the the spatial audio features that come out of the box with WISE and our integrations uh, just means a straighter forward experience uh, for you. And I don't know if you ever dealt with that situation where people would uh, jump back and forth across a trigger to try and break it. Those of you in QA or with experience uh, in QA or even QAing your own work, there it's it's not a bulletproof solution a lot of times, whereas this brings um, a really seamless experience to your ambient transitions as you're navigating a world. And again, bringing that higher level of detail when you're using it in conjunction with uh, rooms and portals um, to be able to propagate um, through portals in a way that sounds natural uh, is a tremendous example of something that we're bringing to workflows uh, when you're using WISE in conjunction with, uh, with game engines. So I'm going to talk about another thing that we went deep into on the WISE Worldwide Online Expo this year. So it'll be brief, but you can dig back. And like I said, uh, as part of that video, as well as in the documentation, uh, the idea here is automating the assignment of an auxiliary bus. Uh, so in, in, in our example, we're going to use it to assign an auxiliary bus to manage the, the reverb that's used for a certain size room. Uh, so I'll dig a little bit into what properties you have available to be able to do that. And again, imagine a world where you're blanketing your world with different sized AK spatial audio volumes or different rooms and automatically based on their size, where you're able to map that to an auxiliary bus, which, uh, which can be its environmental reverb. Let's take a look at where that's set up. We're gonna to go to the project settings menu here in Unreal. We're gonna dig down, 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 down to the integration settings. And within the integration settings here, 
we have our environmental decay oxbus map. So, and this is where you can dis define your uh, ox buses and the properties that uh, that will be calculated uh, on the game engine side and determine which ox bus to send sounds in that volume to. So in this case, we've set up a couple of sizes. We have our dynamic room verb medium. Uh, we have this dynamic room verb uh, large. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah. So at some point, we stopped listening, didn't we? I jumped out into the editor and never jumped back in. What do you want to hear? You want to hear the ocean? You want to hear the the room tone? What uh, What do you want to hear? Portaling. Okay, well, how about if I pause on automatic uh, aux bus and give the people what they really want? Okay, so here, here I am back to, uh, back to this. And the first thing I'll do actually is do a little quick pan. And let's run over here to the ocean. And you can see here, oh yeah. that I'm getting my multi-position information for the ocean sounds that are happening. So that's cool. Again, calculating that position and delivering me the, the appropriate spread and volume based on the attenuation. Now that's cool, I'm just gonna hang out here now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, and from there, let's jump back to the house. Sure. Uh, the house, here we go. And see if we can't catch some of that room tone. I wonder if I'm gonna have to crank it up though. You know what I mean? Uh, wait, wrong house. Any of the minerals or vitamins that your body needs to like mount immune response? No. And even worse, as we'll talk about later, it's entirely possible that it's contributing to things like um, uh, uh, mental ill health. Sure. And yeah, mental health, physical health. Yeah. Because uh... room tones, though, they're really quiet. Like, uh, how do you even hear them? See if we can't come back over here to Wise. Let's get our ambience up. And solo our interiors. We crank them. going to be a level of detail that might not communicate across the the YouTubes here and I really encourage you to put your ears and hands on it so that you can audition the dynamics in a way that 
bring you a greater understanding. Uh, but that's a great suggestion. Uh, and thank you for taking this moment to pause and enjoy the sounds. I hope it's nice and sunny where you're at as well. Cool. Uh, jumping back in to Automatic's Oxbus assignment, we saw the settings in the uh, in the project settings, and now let's take a look at where those land here in the AK Spatial Audio Volume. And the place that we've implemented this is in the train station on the uh, on the small room here in the center. And so this is the AK Spatial Audio Volume. I've navigated to it here. Um, you can see, Where's that no, yeah, okay, so great. You can see here for late reverb, we've set this to automatically assign this to an aux bus. Uh, and so this room now will be uh, automatically assigned to an aux bus according to the map that we set up in our settings there. And you can actually see these, uh, see what is being uh, added here. Uh, we've got some information about the, the decay time, uh, the aux bus that's being assigned, in this case the dynamic room verb medium, uh, the time to first reflection, and any high frequency damping. And let's just scale this volume uh, using the extrude tool. I just love saying the word extrude. So, uh, and, uh, and so if we make this, oh, wrong button. Yeah. If we make this bigger, at some point we're going to cross a threshold and that aux bus is going to be dynamically assigned because of the size of the room. So you can see I'm just about to that place uh, and maybe I can do the magic zoom oh. so you can see I've made it big enough that we've transitioned to this dynamic room verb large preset and let me just scale this down a little bit and you can see that it's automatically assigning the correct aux bus based on the size of this AK spatial audio volume. So hopefully that's coming through over there. And what that allows you to do is, is to add this feature as part of your volumes. And as you're painting them through your world, know that the correct aux bus is gonna get assigned, resulting in, ideally, the correct environmental reverb based on the size of that volume. So instead of having to keep track of all of the different settings that you've assigned based on the size of your AK spatial audio volumes, uh, you can just opt in for this feature, set a map for it, and then propagate wildly and know that it's always going to have the correct assignment based on the size of the portal that you implement. So that is super cool. Uh, big ups to Sean Sorgahan uh, for his implementation on that, uh, as well as the next feature that I want to talk about, which is dynamic RTPC properties. Uh, and again, I, there's so many smart folks at Audio Kinetic, I just really value the specialization they all bring 
towards making interactive audio, you know, dynamic with a level of precision and really empowering people to to reach for this. And the Wise Audio Lab gives you that opportunity to understand some of these things with your hands, with your ears, in a way that will fuel how you think about interactive audio, the opportunities and possibilities to bring dynamism to your games. And uh, I'm just, I'm really thankful for their specialization and dedication to uh, continuing to make things awesome for folks. So dig it, thanks. Uh, all right, dynamic RTPC properties, let's jump in. Uh, back here to WISE, the first thing that I want to look at is I want to look at a couple of auxiliary buses that have been set up for dynamic, uh, dynamic reverberation. Again, we saw those as automatically defined over in the, um, in the properties in Unreal. Uh, and here in WISE, these are aux buses that have been authored with the wise room verb effect and several RTPCs that, uh, that are applied to them for different parts of uh, what we want to control here. So in, in this um, room verb effect properties for real-time parameter control, we've got the decay, high frequency damping, a pre-delay and, a, and a, just a global reverb level. So, so here's where the curves have been authored for these things and their relationship to uh, the properties of the geometry in WISE. So things like the acoustic uh, textures uh, and other parts of the uh, geometric reflections. So this is the Y side authoring and then over here we're going to go back to the same spot in Unreal to the project settings and look at how that is set up in the integration settings. Uh, back here we've got our assignment map uh, and then we've got these additional RTPCs that have been added for high frequency damping, decay, and first reflections. So these are this is the connection over here to uh, to the properties in Unreal that are used with these with the effect uh, authored in Wise. So dynamic uh, because as you change properties of the geometry inside of Unreal those parameters will get communicated to the effect in WISE and contribute to that level of detail that's communicated uh, for, the, for the reverb. So a uh, great new feature that I'm hoping you try out and, uh, and really hear the, the difference that that makes. The last thing I want to land on here is our updated documentation and info nodes. Uh, there's a ton in the documentation. Uh, if you're the kind of person that consumes things through text on a page, uh, there is boundless information through the WISE Audio Lab documentation, uh, as well as online. There's a ton of blogs about the WISE Audio Lab, about the features, going deep, deep into how to use them, scenarios that you might choose. And again, in back in Unreal, all of those things are available to you through the information nodes as well. So back to Unreal, and we've got these information nodes that we can go to. Oh, look, there's one right there in front of me. So I can wander up to that. I can take a look at that. Uh, and again, it will give me better information about what it is that I'm doing. Hey, welcome. 
here's some information some links and everything you need to get started with auditioning and understanding sound through the wise audio lab so that kind of that's kind of it that's that's all the new features that we have for wise 21.1.4 in the wise audio lab definitely check out um, other videos that go deeper into the spatial audio side of things. There's a hands-on with object-based audio using uh, an early version of this demonstration sample project. Uh, I cannot urge you enough. Just grab it. Get your hands on it. Uh, whether you connect wise to it or not, the functionality to be able to toggle things on and off, change configurations, hear the results of these features, and compare them against uh, different spatializations at the endpoint. Uh, it's just a rich sample to understand interactive audio and spatial audio uh, and the way that we're doing it today. So. It's been great to see the conversation fly by in the chat. Thanks to folks who had and answered questions. Uh, it has been a really fun time uh, digging into this deeper. I'm so proud of all the folks who contributed to it. Uh, and I'm excited for people to really get their ears on this functionality because it's hearing is believing, uh, if you've heard that saying before. And it really does uh, benefit one's understanding of the way that this dynamic solution for audio uh, can be used creatively and, and really elevate the audio that you're making for your experience. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, I hope you're excited. Uh, and I thank you for taking this journey into the WISE Audio Lab with me today. Uh, it's been fun. Thanks. Good to see folks here. Uh, had a good time. Great suggestions from the chat. Take it easy out there. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. This is Damien from Audio Kinetic signing off from Wise Up On Air, Hands On, Wise Audio Lab 2021.1.4. Give it a try. So glad to see you. Thanks. Uh, Civil War, that that's when
cannery over like off Memorial Drive. So it's just like the facilities you needed, the canner and stuff? Yep. And the can aren't necessarily terrible for you. No, no, but when you say can, like cans were not involved at all. I'm guessing like glass jars were. No, we can, silver cans. Oh, wow, man. Man, that is serious stuff. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I feel like it's a combat family or something. I just remember it was awful as a kid. Now I'm totally into it. But back then, it was like.